Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connections Standalone. RAM Connection Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we are going to be focusing on the workflow for assigning a moment end plate connection to both beam column flange and beam column web joints within RAM connection standalone. We will now turn our attention to our RAM connection standalone application where I'm going to be focusing on designing a moment end plate connection to joints 2, 3, and 4 during this video. This type of connection is a combined connection, meaning that it can resist both shear and moment reactions that are imposed upon a joint from the beam section. We're going to start with joint number two in the sample model. This is a beam column flange joints with typical wide flange beam and column sections. And again, there is a, both a shear and moment reaction imposed upon this joint. So I'm getting ready to assign my moment end plate to this connection. To start that process, I'm going to click on the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the assign icon. Now the moment end plate connection type is available through either a basic connection or a smart connection workflow. I'm going to start with a basic connection and I'm looking for any of the acronyms that say MEP. Now, as you can see, we have several different options available for a moment end plate that basically govern how the plate will be attached to the column, will it be extended above or below the beam, or would you prefer more of a flush application? I'm gonna go ahead and select the flush application, or at least start there. So I'm gonna select a basic MEP flush, which will use design guide 16. Once I select the appropriate connection type I'm looking for, RAM connection will search the database until it finds a connection that is compatible with both my joint and loading that I have present. You can see here that a shear moment connection or a combined connection was assigned to this joint. So let's go ahead and click close. Now the first thing I'm gonna do after assigning a connection is take a look at my joint selection area. Here I will be able to see the status of my connection design. I can clearly see from this area that my connection is passing. My interaction ratio is less than 1.0 and it is indicated in green, meaning that no errors or warnings were encountered during this process. If you would like some additional information regarding this connection design, you can visit the connection pad as well. To access the connection pad, click on the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on the edit icon, and then you can edit your combined connection. From this area, you can review all your input information and then make changes or customizations to your connection itself. This will include things like the connector, which is your plate type, material, and thickness. You can change your weld parameters for your beam size and your bolt parameters for the support side. And you can also, if we scroll all the way down, you can see that you can add some stiffeners. This Type of connection can be compatible with beam web stiffeners, transverse stiffeners, and column web panel zone stiffeners if needed. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results. So if you go to the ribbon toolbar, click on the results icon to see the steel connection report. Here you'll be able to see all the geometric considerations and design checks that were performed during this process. As you can see, everything is green and all the interaction ratios are less than 1.0 because this connection is passing and there are no warnings that were issued. If you'd like some additional information in this report, you can click on your view formulas icon to see all the formulas and variables that were used to arrive at these results. Now, in addition to that, let's take a look at the connector information. Now, when we selected our connection type, we said we wanted a flush connection, which basically means your plate is not going to be extending too far above your top or bottom flange of your beam section. Now, if you change your mind while you're at this point, you can also select um, any of these other options to see what effect that would have. I'm going to return back to my initial flush option. 
The last thing we're going to take a look at while in the connection pad is the DXF view. So let's go ahead and select the DXF pad where we can see all the detailing of this connection and we can export this DXF for our drawings. If you made any changes at this point, you'd want to go ahead and save it in the connection pad. Uh, since I did not make any changes, I'm just going to go ahead and exit. Let's move on to our beam to column web connection type. And this was actually detailed as an HSS rectangular section using the United States sections database. A moment end plate is also compatible with a beam column web connection if the column is a hollow structural section. So when I'm ready to assign a connection type here, I can just return back to the assign icon. Now this time I'm going to go ahead and access a smart connection workflow. So I'm going to go with a smart MEP and you can see here I have an option specifically for HSS. So let me go ahead and select that and confirm that the connection was assigned. Now again if I would like some further information or obtain the DXF or connection report I can edit the combined connection. Here I'd be able to see all the pieces that will be imposed. Here I can see all the pieces that will be added to this connection design and I can adjust the connector in the beam side and the support side information. Now you're going to notice with an HSS column the option to add stiffeners is of course not available. Let's go ahead and take a look at the DXF to finish this off and you can see all the different plates that were added to this connection. The last type of moment end plate joint that we're going to take a look at is one for a tapered column section. This has been detailed as a beam column flange joint and both the column and the beam sections are tapered. Now if this is type of geometry is what you're looking for in a connection design then you can go with a basic MEP knee type configuration. Now we have a couple different options available here and they're available in both the basic and smart connection workflow. To find this connection type, you can go to the Design tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Assign icon. This time I'm going to select a basic connection. I'm looking for a basic MEP and any of the ones that say knee in it would be compatible with this type of joint. You can see here you have different options about how the plate will be extended, either horizontal, vertical, or perpendicular to the joint. I'm going to go ahead and select the Vertical Extended Upwards option. And then I could see what that would end up looking like. Now this one did reveal a warning. So if I take a look in the joint selection area, I'd be able to see the interaction ratio. And I'd also be able to see that it, the indicator light is in yellow, meaning that I did produce a warning on this connection. So let's go ahead and manually edit it through the connection pad. So I'm going to click on the edit icon and then edit my combined connection. And of course this will bring up whichever connection type is active in the joint selection area. So let's go ahead and take a look at our results for this particular connection that we have selected. And we'll be able to see here that the beam flange does not fit on the connection plate. So it looks like I need to adjust some geometry. And here I could see what the value was and the minimum value. And I even see the design guide and equation for which I am receiving that warning. If I scroll on down, all the design checks are passed, which corresponds with the interaction ratio I received. Let's go ahead and close out of the report. Let's scroll down and see if we can make some changes. The first thing I'm going to take a look at is the bolting information. So here I'm going to find my gauge distance. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to 6 inches. Next I'm going to enter the, and let's go ahead and spin this around so we can see a little bit clearly what we're doing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my horizontal edge distance. Let's go ahead and make this 2.5 inches instead. And you can see how sometimes changing your bolt layout will change actually the size of your plates. I'm going to go ahead and scroll on down until I find the stiffener information as well. So here I'm going to adjust my transverse stiffener width. I'm going to increase this to 3.75 inches. I'm going to change my plate material. I'm 
I'm going to change my welding electrodes. And I'm going to change my weld side to support. I'm going to go with a quarter inch weld. Now I've made several changes here. I basically adjusted some of my stiffener geometry and I adjusted my bolt spacing. And what that bolt spacing did was it made my uh, plate a little bit wider so everything fits a little bit nicer there. Now if I take a look in the ribbon in the connection pad, I can see that it's now indicated in green, meaning I passed the code check and I did not produce any warnings through this process. Now if I'd like some additional information, I can also go to my DXF view to see the detailing of this connection design. Now since I did make changes to this particular joint, I'm going to go ahead and click on the save icon and then I can close out of the connection pad. You're going to see your joint selection area is updated for the new status of your connection design. My indicator is light as green, which means that it did pass with no warnings. Now at this point, this concludes my process for assigning a moment end plate combined connection in RAM connection standalone to a beam to support joint. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.